Okay, got a uh, little um, mini video, hopefully a mini video. I see a lot of people on the Facebook forums and things who want some things that can set things off on, on alarms, as it were, trigger things, make people jump and stuff like that. But they don't want to mess about with programming and Arduinos and stuff. And a lot of the prop controllers out there are pretty expensive. So... I thought, what else can you get that's that's uh, useful? And I found this thing on Amazon. It's like $13, $14. Recordable motion sense for USB alarm for Halloween or store. So it's supposed to be an unboxing, but I've never done an unboxing. So you can probably see I've already done the unboxing. Um, this consists of a little box, tiny little zapper remote. Uh, some instructions and then various ways to mount the thing you've got a effectively a this is a ball joint that clicks onto the back of the thing slides into here so you can actually screw it to a wall and mount it you know any position you want on a wall uh you've got some 3m tape if you just want to stick the thing somewhere or you know loads of different ways comes with a usb cable but there's a micro little tiny zapper basic functions on off volume next track repeat mode stuff like that um the actual unit itself is you can probably see by my hands is um pretty small about a one and a half by three by i don't know three quarters usb socket here on off switch three triple a batteries um PIR sensor at the top, speaker at the bottom. You've also got some buttons on the side for choosing different memories and changing the volume as well. So if you lose this thing, you can probably still get, get away with it. If we look at the instructions, they're actually pretty decent. Um, tell you what all the things do on there. Uh, and tells you about the actual um, folders you can put different folder structure on the actual thing when you connect it to a pc and here look it tells you you know you can use three batteries or you can use a usb power supply block so if you need it to run longer or whatever you can do it that way reckons it triggers distance less than four meters 120 degree wide um, it's got four megabytes of memory inside which can easily store it says multiple voice files that's quite a few voice files um, I've got a white one, but it says you can get it in black as well. And black might be easier to sort of hide in your haunt, really, if you're using it for Halloween. Um, so what we're going to do, I'm going to just uh, connect it to the PC, show you on the screen just how easy it is to move files to it. And then uh, after that, we're going to open it up and see if we can do other things with it. Um, the first thing we'll do is we're going to give it a quick demo and just show you the sort of things it can do with the sounds I've put on it. Okay, put three AAA batteries in the thing. Let's turn it on. Oh. Immediately greeted by a screen. Press the volume button, that's volume one. Too low for any use really. Two, three, four, five. Five is the loudest, it's still not super loud. You put it somewhere you know, reasonably close, that could be useful. And then if I press next one, I've also got a monster sound on there. So now when it triggers, you get the growling monster. Okay, so pretty easy. So let's open it up and see what else we can do with it. Okay, it's only four screws in the back. Let's try and get those out quick. And we'll open it up, see what's inside. I'll review this, I think, but I've probably already voided its warranty. So what do we expect inside? Well, the speaker, obviously, uh, the PIR sensor, and some sort of controller board with the actual processor on, which is going to have memory in, involved in it. Taking that off. And what do we get inside okay so that's quite nice to see the battery box connects to a circuit board by a little connector which we can unplug and then here's the speaker which flaps around inside presumably because it's held held in position by the back of the battery box 
also on a connector. That's very nice. And take those two out. We've got one little circuit board, one little screw holding it in place. Let's get that out. Okay, it's a shorter screw than the others, so it should be easy not to mix up. Let's take it out. Okay, oh, okay, and what we find is the on-off switch is a switch on the side of the board. You can see here, standard slide switch, and there's a little plastic marker there. The uh, PIR is just in a separate frame. And then the three buttons on the side are a little plastic assembly as well. So that's actually pretty well put together for one of these things. So a little white PCB, nothing on the back. So on the top, what have we got? That's the PIR sensor up there. Switch, obviously, USB connector. Um, don't know what these things are. I could probably have a look under the microscope. There's going to be a little miniature processor, microcontroller type thing. On the PIR, you've got some, some test points, VCC ground and PIR. So that's promising because these three pins on the back of the PIR almost certainly connect straight to these things. Now, most of the time, these PIRs will give you a logic output, a voltage output that changes when it's triggered. And if, if so, we can do things with that potentially. We can tap into that and we could potentially drive a relay or something like that and get it to trigger something. So what I'm gonna do is get, my, get the power back on it via the batteries or the USB, the USB I think, and then use an oscilloscope to see what's there. Okay, so I've hooked up the battery box actually and also the little speaker you can see that when it triggers, both these blue lights come on. Didn't even see them before, they must be hidden. So let's just have a little route around. Shell of this USB connector is almost certainly uh, ground. Uh, so there should be a voltage here, 3.3 volts. So the, one of these things must be a voltage regulator. My guess is either this guy or this guy here. That's giving a nice steady 3.3 volts to the logic. Let's have a look with a multimeter what's happening on the PIR pin. Absolutely nothing from a, at least from a, um, a DC level using a, a multimeter. So let's flip it over. We're going to get the ground pin is down here. Going to find. That's the other ground pin. Okay, so that's the pin. You see there, it's triggered. It's gone to zero volts. It's finished, it goes back to 3.3. .3. Triggers, back to zero volts. Okay, so this pin here, basically when it triggers, it goes to zero volts. Otherwise, it's sitting up um, at 3.3 volts. Now I can visualize that for you just by using an oscilloscope. Now, although most of you might not have an oscilloscope, let's see what you could see if you had one. Okay, so I've had to zoom out a bit here. This is a pretty basic oscilloscope. It's a rechargeable one, um, 100 megahertz bandwidth, uh, dual channel. It's pretty useful for little hobby things like this. I put the ground clip of the oscilloscope on the USB shell of the connector because we know it's ground. And now I've got the oscilloscope probe on um, the actual pin that's toggling. And what we see is it's usually actually sitting at ground level until it triggers. I had it wrong when I looked on the multimeter. Now it's triggered, it's gone high. And then once the trigger has gone away, it turns off. If you're wondering why the sound keeps playing, it's because once the thing is triggered and triggered the controller to play the sound, the sound just keeps playing. It's not going to cut the sound off halfway way through like that. It's just going to let the thing finish. Okay, so we know now this point here will bounce up and down between to 3.3 volts when it's triggered. Now, if we connect that to uh, the gate of a transistor um, and then use a 5 volt relay back to the battery box, we should be able to actually turn a relay on and off 
uh, when the thing is triggered. Now, as soon as you can turn a relay, that means you can switch lighting, you could switch motors, you could do all sorts of other things. So let's put some wires on and see what that looks like. Okay, so now I've got a relay hooked up to this thing. Now, what I actually found was that using the, uh, the sensor output directly, which is the back of this PIR sensor, it goes here, it was actually quite unreliable and you would get all sorts of triggers that weren't triggers or half triggers or anything. But what I noticed was every single time it came on, these two blue LEDs lit up. Now, the circuit for, uh, for this is pretty simple. It's going to be driven either high or, or low from, from one of these controller trips. I actually found the end of this resistor here is driving high when it's triggered and then goes off when it's not triggered. Hence, the LED comes on. So we can sketch that out on the screen. And it looks kind of like this. So all I've done now is take that wire, put it onto the input of this relay, uh, and then kept the, the ground pin, which we already knew earlier, and the five volt pin, which is from the switched output. Uh, and it goes to this relay. This one is both an active high or low. So I've got it set for active high because it goes, it triggers when the thing goes. So when I turn it on, you should see the blue, the, the sound will come out, the blue LEDs will come on, and you should also hear the click of the relay, and its little light will come on. You see it's triggered, the blue LEDs are on, and boom, off again. If I just turn off my desk light, it's maybe a bit easier to see, and you can hear the click. So what we're doing now is basically, you know, you adjusted this thing, modified this thing, so that it can now fire a relay module when it gets triggered and play a sound. Now, because it can trigger the relay module, you can switch anything you want with the app, the contacts of this thing. You could turn on a light, even a mains powered light, or a, a 12 volt light. You could put on a motor, anything else you really wanted to do with it. So this little $13 gizmo, is um it's pretty flexible in this respect now the only issue you've got of course is you know when you put this together back together in here um there's no room for this relay so you're going to have to put some sort of box um on the back of this with the, the little wires going in between and also but also of course if you're going to if you are going to put mains control and power on here to switch like a you know a mains light bulb or something then you need to put all this in a safety box anyway so you're going to have to box it one way or the other, really. But I think this shows that, you know, one of these cheap little dollar, $13 um, uh, gizmos, it can reliably ch uh, trigger, it can play audio, whichever audio you want, and it can now also... Okay, so what we're going to do is um, add the relay. We're going to put in a little project box. Here's one I found laying around. I was going to 3D print one, but honestly, I'm just going to use this thing. Um... So we're gonna put the relay board in there on the back of this one. We're gonna put some heat shrink over these wires first. We'll have to unsolder them just to put the heat shrink on, make it look neat and tidy. And then we're gonna have, this is an old power cable from the wall, just a two, a two pole. So this is a live and a neutral. And here is the standard lamp holder, just to prove the idea that this little $13 PIR box can now switch a mains powered lamp. So I'm going to start soldering it all together and making the holes and stuff. I'm sure you all know how to make holes. So um, I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so what we're going to do is um, add the relay. We're going to put in a little project box. Here's one I found laying around. I was going to 3D print one, but honestly, I'm just going to use this thing. Um, so we're going to put the relay board in there on the back of this one. We're going to put some heat shrink over these wires first. We'll have to unsolder them just to put the heat shrink on, make it look neat and tidy. And then we're going to have, this is an old power cable from the wall, just a two, a two pole. So this is a live and a neutral. And here is the standard lamp holder, just to prove the idea that this little $13 PIR box can now switch a mains powered lamp. So. I'm going to start soldering it all together and making the holes and stuff. I'm sure you all know how to make holes. 
So um, I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so I've trimmed all the wires so they're basically the same length. And then, you know, I could use the terminal blocks, but I've already been soldering and I love a soldered joint better, really. DC plus, DC minus in. So flip it over, it's the other way up. This bottom one here is going to be your DC in or your, your power to the thing, which uh, we tapped off five volts from the switch, if you remember. And I'm just going to solder that to there. And then the next one was the ground return, which we're going to put on the middle pin. Finally, the actual switch line. Okay, close enough. And this thing's just going to sit in here. You can see this little box actually did have some, some mounting holes. They don't line up, they, they never do. But that's just the way of things. And then we will quickly check that the lid will fit before we you know, turn it off and Hopefully you can see in there, there's, there's, there's room in there. So we'll probably glue this thing down later on. This is really just a quick and uh, quick test to show people, you know, what we can do. Now the other end, this comes with like a blanking plate, this guy. I need to drill some holes in it. I don't want to make them massive to get me head in. So um, I'm going to measure up my cables. Uh, this one's measuring 3.8 millimeters. Uh, so it's going to be 7.5, of course, 7.6 it would be really, wouldn't it, if it was two of them joined together and they were circular. So what I'll probably do is do four, two four millimeter holes right next to each other and then sort of bodge them between so it makes like an oval hole. And then that cable will go through, not too bad. And what about these ones? So I didn't find a, um, a mains power a socket to switch, so we'll have to do the light socket. It's exactly the same. 2.7 so this should be 5.4 I guess uh, 5.2 5 whatever so I, if I do two three millimeter holes for that guy and then if I put two there and two there I can poke these through I can put a strain relief behind them uh, I can also use some electrical tape as well I mean this is just a test one I'm probably not even going to keep it like this so I probably won't do that Okay, so done with two holes. They're not going to win any prizes in the beautiful hole competition, if there is such a thing. But you get the idea. Um, these two go in here. And they're pretty tight in the hole. Um, and then the two chubbier ones, they go in there as well. Again, pretty nice fit in both. Um, and the easiest way to strain relief these, to stop them pulling through and breaking, is actually a zip tie, a tie wrap tight on each of these things will stop it being pulled out so next thing to do is wire these together now we're only going to switch the live that's pretty normal with these things so the, what you have to do is work out well which one's the live one well on, on a us plug the little skinny one here is the live pin the wider one is a return pin the neutral pin um, and what i see from the cable is that the live one has some writing on and it's basically smooth so if i look around here that would be this one so this is our switched live this is our neutral and then this one is neutral i really do find it quite strange that neutral wires in the us are white and power lines are black the live wires are back i'd love to know why that happens every other thing i've ever seen has black as a return wire um, anyway, that's beside the point. I'm going to uh, solder these together, put some heat shrink on to complete the neutral circuit. And then I'm simply going to wire these two into the relay. Uh, and then we'll be able to see the thing working and switching. Now, how to wire these up. So, three terminals on a relay on the actual switched end. NO, COM and NC. So common is co com is common. That's the one that gets switched both sides. NO normally open and NC normally closed. So in this case, we're going to go between normally open and common. Um, and then what will happen is as the thing fires, it, it will basically connect the two together. It's just a switch at the end of the day. So here we are wired in just about fits in the box. Um, if I was going to make this a permanent thing, I'd be screwing or gluing down the relay. I'd be 
strain relieving here and here with some zip ties i'd probably be putting well if it's going outside i'd be putting uh some insulation some um waterproofing uh in here but for now you know this is just a quick a quick thing just to show the basic idea so i'm going to put the lid on then going to put a screw in the back of the thing um, and then we're going to test it out okay so it's all wired up and um, box sits on the back just a little bit of hot glue holding out on the back it's not ideal this box because you can't get to the battery compartment now so you know you need a more permanent solution this but it's just to show you what's possible really so we're going to turn it on and there you go monster comes on noise comes on bulb goes off trigger it again off it goes so this is showing you how with a 13 dollar um, pir voice player from amazon um, or ebay or somewhere else or probably aliexpress you've got something that can trigger play a sound and now with the with the addition of a simple relay you can also control lights etc as well you could easily control you know motors or anything else you wanted really uh super inexpensive and pretty quick and easy to do